tonight, and I'm going to keep it brief, but I wanted to uh, um, share words with uh, everyone and primarily thank yous. But when I was listening to the presentations earlier, um, I reflected back and I had called my brother Bob up, who gives a lot of speeches, and I said, Bob, what do I need to know about giving a good speech? And he says, you got to begin strong, Jim, and end strong, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think about the best way to begin, and then um, uh, both Dr. O'Reilly, Bill, uh, Rob, and then Dr. Keen, Bill, and Ed all said, you know, um, I didn't tell any jokes tonight, so well, maybe that was a hint for me to, to start off with a uh, joke, <laughs> which is dangerous to do, <laughs> unless it involves yourself. And so a typical joke, one would say, is two Irishmen go into a bar. <clears throat> But I'm not going to, I'm going to change that to one Irishman goes into a bar, and that Irishman happened to be me, and it was today. Because I was home today, and they said, take the day off and relax. And sort of like a caged tiger, I was home till around noon, and I was sort of walking back and forth, and uh, my barber and said, uh, you need to do something to get you out of the house. So they sent me to a bar. <laughs> but the bar was the Genius Bar at the Apple Store in Suburban Square. <laughs> and my task, my task to start off the afternoon was to sit at the Genius Bar with a um, Macare Pro book that wasn't working, and I had registered, and I sat there for an hour, and I was hoping that some of the Genius fairy dust would sort of settle on my shoulders, and perhaps I would have something more brilliant to say. But I had a great time there, and um, for a person my age, I was fortunate enough to be carted. Now, and most of you people don't know what it is to be carted, but when you're a young man in New York City and you're 18 and you're 21, you know, you have to show proof of age. Well, I was the only one over age 45 who was at the bar today, and so I was carted for being over age. And I feel particularly enlightened to be if I had that good start to my day. On a serious note, though, uh, I want to thank everyone, and certainly I want to thank uh, uh, Natalie Loudon for that excellent presentation and for her coming all the way from Paris uh, to join us tonight. Um, it's really appropriate because um, Barbara and I have um, a real connection uh, with the City of Lights, and I'll refer to that a little later, but I thank you for that excellent presentation and uh, your friendship, and we look forward to many uh, continued dialogues with our colleagues and friends. But I'm going to start my thank yous to the Jefferson family, and uh, Dr. Bill Keen reminisced about how we had started out back at Penn, and indeed, everything he said was true. And to echo that, um, after those 13 years of looking around, when he made it happen for Barbara and I to come back here to Philadelphia, he had supported me all the way. And the tangible ways he supported me was that two months after I arrived, he started to say the senior residence down to AI DuPont Institute, as was known then, to show his support for the pediatric otolaryngology program. And as the program has grown, many of the residents have come through. And so I thank Bill and Louise for their continued support to uh, uh, Barbara and myself over the years, because they have made our lives immensely uh, happy and successful. So I thank you, Bill and Louise. And I also want to thank all of the senior faculty um, at Jefferson who have been colleagues in having the program uh, aspire to great heights, and that includes Dr. Mark Rosen, David Malboom, and uh, certainly uh, Dr. Pitkin, as well as Dr. Keating. The whole faculty, and many of them I had the opportunity to train, have been stellar um, uh, examples of certain people's growth. I mentioned before the uh, fact that the cochlear implantation was uh, uniquely miracle of, of my career and robotic surgery and many things we do in skull based surgery, things that we never dreamed of when I started my training that are now routine. I'm fortunate to also have, in addition to the residents, several of my fellows here, and that includes Karen Chenapati, but I'd like uh, Dr. Alicia Turk to stand up, and uh, we want to give her a round of applause, but Dr. Turk is the recipient of two cochlear implants and transformed her career, and Alicia is the star at St. Christopher's, and um, uh, we tried to do a lot of things uh, well during the fellowship year, but probably the best thing that Rob and uh, Ellen Joyce and everyone was going to accomplish is to uh, encourage us to 
to get that um, implant, and uh, we feel very good about that. So thank you again for all my Jefferson family. I'd like to thank also my uh, the Lord Dupont family. Um, you know, when I first arrived, um, uh, there was only four non-orthopedic surgeons, and um, uh, growing the department uh, was a challenge, and I was quickly joined by my colleague and friend, uh, Steve Cook, and Linda, uh, as colleagues throughout this uh, growth period, enabled me to uh, bring on Dr. Ellen Doyle, Dr. Rob O'Reilly, Richard Schmidt, and now we have Patrick Barth, and uh, Heather Nardone, and Doug Johnston, as well as Dr. Diane Shaw, who runs our um, uh, residency and fellowship programs, and I think I admitted that Dr. Richard Smith, who runs our head name program. So I have very great faculty with great depth, and they make my life um, truly a joy. Um, and I'll tell you one other sort of anecdote. During those 20 years or so, I've been here, 16 of those years, I was head of um, surgery, and you don't do that without a lot of assistance. Um, three weeks into my reign doing that, the woman who was my administrator wife relied on to um, uh, teach me the, the ropes, you might say, uh, announced that she was leaving to uh, work at a church. She had sort of found Jesus. And, and so uh, as she, she left uh, my employee, I was praying equally hard to find someone in Barbara Price and uh, Mary Donner and our whole team um, helped to grow. And we grew from those four surgeons that were non orthopedics to approximately 35 now. So there was a lot of growth with a lot of hard work from everyone uh, along the pathway. Um, and in addition to the Jefferson family and the Moore's family, I want to thank my own family who are here tonight. Um, I was fortunate <clears throat> to be raised in a, in a loving family. Two of my siblings are here. My sister Carleen came up from Florida, and my brother Bob is here from uh, New York. And we're also joined tonight by um, two of my children. My son uh, Brian is here with his wife Gail, and they're two beautiful grandchildren, Clara and Dylan, as well as my son Gregory, who um, is part of the Jeff family. He did a post-bac nursing degree here and now is an ICU nurse in a medical ICU out in Chicago at um, Rush Medical Center. So I'm very proud of that. And um, last, but uh, certainly um, <clears throat> the most important part of this uh, journey is uh, my wife, who most of you know is Bobby, uh, which is her childhood nickname, Barbara, who, um, to get back to Dr. Ludon's coming from Paris, many of you know, but a lot of you may not know that um, Bobby and I met uh, in Paris in 1969. Um, it was a fortuitous uh, day in my life in that uh, we were at Place de la Concorde. I was on the, uh, a line that was not moving and was intended to take a tour of the uh, sewers of Paris, and uh, Bobby was able to coax me into watching a place where she went up to the uh, uh, Dong who was sort of running the uh, operation, and he was able to get her on to the last boat. And he asked the important question, are you alone? And she says, no, there's someone with me. And she came back and said, uh, I think I can get you on the boat if you want to come with me. And so that started a journey that <laughs> lasted for many happy, happy years. So that led to another event that um, involved uh, the connection that led to Dr. Udonin. That did, in probably 1984, uh, Dr. Charlie Bluestone, who was my mentor, uh, invited Dr. Philippe Narcy as his guest of honor at an ASCO meeting out in San Diego. And uh, <clears throat> recognizing that Dr. Narcy and his wife we benefit from a translator at the table that they invited Bobby to join them and maybe. And so we had uh, a lovely evening. We got to know the Narcisse well. And through Dr. Narcisse, Dr. Uh, Noel Garabadian, and um, uh, our children have uh, exchanged many happy times um, visiting both in France and many of these French physicians sent their children to spend time with us. So that has been uh, a unique and sustaining a uh, connection between Paris and Dr. Udon uh, in our own lives. <clears throat> and in closing, uh, every married man in the room would realize that they get their best advice from their wife. And so I've gotten a lot of advice over the years that's all been excellent, but the one I always remember, 
And the one that Bobby always says to me is, you gotta smile. You look too serious when you are. It's not good, you know? So I, I take that to heart. So I'm really smiling, both um, on the outside and on the inside. This is really a very special night. And the kind words that were said about me and certainly the uh, effort that everyone has put into this, uh, starting with Karen Keene and Dr. Bacon and Future lectures of equal um, clinical excellence as well as friendship. So, thank you all very nice and have a safe trip home. Thank you.